In this episode of the FXDM educational series, we're going to be taking a look at some basic charting methods. Now, we're just going to be scratching the surface of some effective methods to look for trading opportunities to get you started as you begin to learn more about identifying buying or selling opportunities in the Forex. Now, when we talk about charting, what we're basically saying is that it's a study of price changes over time. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to identify periods where the chart is telling us that investor sentiment is changing or shifting. And this is particularly important when those shifts are in favor of the prevailing trend, so especially as entry opportunities. Now, why don't we start with some short-term techniques? And when we think about short-term techniques, a very common way to approach this is with price patterns that are based on candlesticks or bars. Now, an example of a technique like this would be pipe tops. So a pipe top appears when the market has been trending higher. So we'll look at an example of this here in just a second. It's been trending higher and then all of a sudden we get a couple of unusual bars or candles. They kind of stand out all by themselves. They're really tall. These could be candles. They could be uh, bars. Either way, what we're looking for is something that's all standing out all by itself and then it's confirmed with a lower close like this. Now the inverse of this we would look at as a pipe bottom. And what we're studying here is we're seeing that the, initially the market went up and then right after that it went right back down and, and did so with a lot more volatility than what we've seen recently. So this tells us, let's say for example, that this were to appear after the market had been in a long-term downtrend, we'd had a brief correction to the upside then we get this pipe top here that would give us a bearish signal. So that would be in favor of the prevailing trend. Let's look at an example of a pipe top. So this is a really good example of a pipe top. You can see this one on the euro dollar on October 14th and 15th. This is 2015. That was actually confirmed with a lower close after those two tall candles that more or less matched each other from the highs to the lows. We get a big green candle followed by a big red candle. You could see the same thing if you were looking at bar charts as well. And then we get that lower close on the 16th. So that was day number three. Now this was all happening at a resistance level. And we would define that by this price where the pipe top was appearing being roughly equal to another recent high where the price wasn't able to go beyond that level. So this is a really good example of a confirmed pipe top where we would expect that following that confirming day, that lower close after those two big candles was likely to initiate another move to the downside in the euro to the US dollar pair. Now, most candlestick patterns or bar chart patterns are assumed to lead to a fairly short term move in the price. Now, that could turn out to be a very large move, but that we'd start with the assumption that it's a fairly short term move in the price. Now, the longer a price pattern takes to form, however, then we would assume that the subsequent move in the price is also going to be proportionally larger than we would with a candlestick or a bar chart pattern. Now, let me give you an example, a very common technique out there in the market to identify a continuation of the trend are these short term consolidation patterns that we call pennants and flags. So let's do a bearish example. Let's say that the euro to the US dollar had been falling in value and then begins to consolidate within a narrowing range. So just like this. Now, this little pattern here looks kind of like a small triangle or a pennant, and that's what, exactly what it is. Now, what a trader is looking for is they're looking for a breakout below that lower support level that would indicate that the trend, the previous trend, was beginning to reassert itself. Now, a variation on this would be a flag. And they're very similar, but the difference being that if the price was going down, so let's do this example again, the price is going down, but it begins to consolidate within a range where both the support and resistance level is climbing like this. So a little bit counter trend. Now, this is not necessarily a hard and fast rule. The flag can be somewhat parallel support and resistance levels and kind of flat. That's OK, too. But this is more or less a classic pattern here where bulls are attempting to take control of the market. But ultimately, what we're looking for is a breakout to the downside. So in both cases, if we get a breakdown below support, so here in the case of the pennant and or flag, and here in the case of a pennant, what we're looking for is to see that this is going to continue to the downside so a trader can take a short position. In fact, let's look at an example of this on the euro to the US dollar. Earlier in 2015, in January and February, 
you can see that the prior trend on the euro dollar was to the downside and then the pair began to consolidate where we got this bouncing back and forth in the price between a descending resistance level and an ascending support level. So this is a classic example of a pennant formation. What we're looking for is for the price to actually break down below that ascending support level in favor of the prevailing trend, which in this case was bearish, which then it subsequently did. And we got a nice move lower from about 1.13 even to 1.04610. Although most price patterns that we're generally looking for are probably going to perform better when they are indicating an entry or potentially an exit in favor or in compliance with the prevailing trend, there are reversal patterns out there as well. Now the general rule of thumb that you want to apply with reversal patterns is they need to be very large. Now here's a couple of examples that are fairly classic actually. The head and shoulders pattern is probably the most common. The Pattern is identified by, in this case, a rising market, and then we get a series of three peaks. So just like this. Now what is, this is indicating, so we've got a shoulder on the left, shoulder on the right, and we have a head here in the middle, and when it breaks below the neckline, well, what that's indicating is that the market has run out of steam and that bears are able to take control. Now it's not gonna be 100%, but historically speaking, this is a very reliable pattern. And again, the more dramatic, the larger, the better. Now I have an extreme example, but this is pretty classic that we can take a look at on the pound yen. Now, as I said, this is a pretty extreme example, but it's classic. And we do find these from time to time in the Forex. This is a very large head and shoulders pattern that appeared on the pound yen in early 2006 through 2007. So it really filled those characteristics that we're looking for in a reversal pattern where we actually are assuming that the prevailing trend is going to end, not that the breakout is going to be in favor of the prevailing trend, but instead that the trend is actually going to reverse. So in this case, we have a classic pattern of a shoulder on the left, a head in the middle, and a shoulder on the right with a clean break of the neckline. In this case, the pattern actually was triggered, or the decline in the pattern was actually triggered when the Bank of England cut interest rates, which is a fundamental factor that we've looked at in another video here in the FXDM educational series. Although it's very dramatic, a head and shoulders pattern is not the only reversal pattern that traders should be paying attention to. So for example, a more common one that will appear from time to time is just a triple top. The only difference being that as the market forms those highs, they are roughly at the same height. So we don't have that prominent peak there in the middle as we do in a head and shoulders pattern. So that's a very common one, a very bearish uh, price pattern. Again. The larger and the longer that's taken to, to form, generally the more reliable that breakout is to the downside, either as a trigger for longs to control their risk or potentially for shorts to look for a new opportunity to the downside. In fact, many times we'll get reversal patterns that are not three tops, but just two. So we have a high there and we have a high there, roughly at the same height. And then we have a break below the midpoint again. So this would be a double top. In fact, let's take a quick look at a double top so you can see how this plays out in the live market. This double top occurred in May 2014 as the euro to the US dollar was trading around 1.39 even. So the breakout point was at about 1.37. You can see that here. And after the price broke that midpoint, it actually retraced. So it rallied a little bit right back up to the midpoint. Well, when that happens, we call that a retest, and it's a good confirming signal if subsequently the price continues to move to the downside, which in this case it actually did for quite some time. The euro only stopped short of parity by about four cents there in March of 2015. Now, just like consolidation patterns like flags or pennants can work for either an upside trade or bullish trade or a bearish trade, just depending on which direction the market was going when it initially formed, reversal patterns are very similar. Now, so far we've done some bearish examples and bullish examples of reversal patterns are just the mirror image. So for example, a double top that we just looked at, well, this could easily be a double bottom. So again, we're looking for the mirror image, which means that initially the trend would be negative. Then we form a couple of lows that are roughly at the same price level with a move up beyond that midpoint in the double bottom. So that would have similar implications. In other words, a break beyond that midpoint there would indicate that shorts should be controlling their risk or potentially longs should be initiating a new position to the upside. Same thing is true with an inverted head and shoulders pattern where the middle 
trough in that case would match the middle peak in the case of a regular head and shoulders pattern. So once you learn one form of this pattern, you can apply it for both for bearish as well as for bullish opportunities. Thank you.